Thanks for checking out this video to tell you about what is coming to Shutter for January. And before I get into that, I need to say this. Look, we knew it was going to slow down a little bit at some time with the excitement level for what Shutter kept putting out from month to month. So I think January 2021 is that slowdown. And some people may be very disappointed about that. I'm actually okay with that because I have a ton of stuff in my uh, watch list on Shutter that I need to get caught up on. So January will give me a little bit of time to get caught up. That said, there is still some good stuff. So here's what's coming. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start with the exclusives and originals for Shutter, which if you don't know, I will always have reviews for those uh, days ahead of them actually hitting Shutter, and there are no spoiler reviews. They will always be on my channel. I, they usually put out their uh, new Shutter originals and exclusives on Thursdays, and I will have my reviews up usually on the Monday of that week, so you can kind of, you know, get an idea of what it's going to be like. Now that said, there is one I will not be doing, and when I get to it, I'll explain why. So the first Shutter film is a Shutter um, original called Hunted, and that's coming January fourteenth. What started as a flirtatious encounter at a bar turns into a life-or-death struggle as Eve becomes the unknowing target of a misogynistic plot against her. Forced to flee as two men pursue her through the forest, she's pushed to her extremes while fighting to survive. But survival isn't enough for Eve. She will have revenge, a modern and radical take on the Little Red Riding Hood fable. Sounds interesting. Hunted is an exhilarating, transcendent, and frequently brutal survival tale that elevates itself with the power of mythic, myth and magic while still holding an exacting mirror to present-day society. Sounds interesting. I'm definitely into that. That is also available Canada, UK, and New Zealand, Australia. The Queen of Black Magic, which is a Shudder original as well, coming January 28th. The sins of the past come back with a vengeance in this new film from two of Indonesia's modern masters of horror, director Kimo Stambol and writer Joko Anwar, which, by the way, if you have not seen Impedagore by Joko Anwar, which I believe is still on Shudder, you must, must, must. That film is awesome. Check that out. A family travels to the distant rural orphanage where the father was raised to pay their respects to the facility's gravely ill director. But his and his best friend's homecoming turns into a terrifying supernatural ordeal that threatens their and their family's lives. Someone is using dark magic to avenge evil deeds long buried but not forgotten. Stra Stambol's film is a reimagining of the 1981 Indonesian horror classic of the same name. Also available in Canada, UK, and Australia, New Zealand. I'm excited for that one because Joko Anwar. Yes. Impedagore. I will see anything this person does now because of Impedagore. Very good. Uh, this is the one I will not be doing. It's a show. It's season two, and that's why I won't be doing it because I haven't seen season one. So season two of A Discovery of Witches, that is coming January 9th. I'm not going to go into the description of that because it may give spoilers from the first season, so I don't want to read it because I will do a review of the first season at some point, and then I'll go ahead and do the second season or actually, when I do a review, I'll probably just watch seasons one and two and just do a full review of the whole thing. So, But just know that's coming uh, January 9th, season two of A Discovery of Witches. And season one is on Shudder at the moment. Okay, so other stuff coming. Um, the Walking Dead World Beyond, season one. I'm not excited about this. Not big into Walking Dead. Uh, not big in zombies in general. So January 21st, the most recent series in the Walking Dead universe comes to Shudder, the Walking Dead world beyond, delves into a new mythology and story that follows the first generation raised in the surviving civilization of a post-apocalyptic world. Two sisters along with two friends leave a place of safety and comfort to brave dangers known and unknown, living and undead, on an important quest. Pursued by those who wish to protect them and those who wish to harm them, a tale of growing up and transformation unfurls across dangerous terrain, challenging everything they know. Okay. All right. I'm still not going to watch it. Not into the Walking Dead stuff. But if you want to, go for it. A collection coming. There is going to be a Peter Cushing collection coming on January 18th, uh, which will involve the films And Now the Screaming Starts, Asylum, The Beast Must Die, and The Flesh and the Fiends. 
So I think there might be um, little little uh, synopses for them coming up, and I'll get to that. Okay, so coming January 4th, Super Dark Times. Zach and Josh are best friends growing up in the 90s in the suburbs, where teenage life revolves around hanging out, looking for kicks, navigating first love, and vying for popularity. When a traumatic incident drives a wedge between the previously inseparable pair, their youthful innocence abruptly vanishes. Each possesses the tragedy in his own way until circumstances grow increasingly complex and spiral into violence. And that's available for all Shutter areas. I'm just going to say that instead of saying UK, Canada, US, Australia, New Zealand. All Shutter areas. Fingers, also coming on the 4th. When an employee shows up to work with a missing pinky, it awakens demons in his boss that she never knew she harbored. Okay. That's it. And that's everywhere. For Shudder. Uh, January 9th, Discovery of Witches. We already talked about that. January 11th, Before the Fire. As a global pandemic engulfs Los Angeles, rising TV star Ava Boone is forced to flee the mounting chaos and return to her rural hometown. As she struggles to acclimate to a way of life she left behind long ago, her homecoming attracts a dangerous figure from her past, threatening both her and the family that serves as her only sanctuary. Hmm, I don't know about that. The next one I have seen before, and I do recommend it is a good film, and that is also coming January 11th, Cub... Oh, by the way, uh, Before the Fire is coming to all shutter areas. Cub um, does not specify where it's going, so I guess just the U.S. A boy scout on a camping trip realizes something evil is in the woods, but the other scouts who love to pick on Sam don't buy his story. What nobody knows is that a deranged poacher and his feral son have booby-trapped the entire area and are eager to test out their toys on the clueless children. Like I said, I've seen it. It's good. It's been some years. Also come the 11th, The Pit. 12-year-old Jamie is an outcast in his small town. He is bullied, he shows signs of being a sexual deviant, and he has no friends aside from his demonic teddy bear Teddy. Um, I'm already sold on this. Influ influenced by commands he hears from Teddy, Jamie lures his unsuspecting tormentors one by one to a forest pit that he has discovered on the outskirts of town so that they can be devoured by the man-eating troglodytes that dwell at the bottom of the pit. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm in. I want to see that one. Um, this one doesn't specify, so I'm guessing just the U.S. Celia, also coming the 11th. An imaginative and somewhat disturbed young girl fantasizes about evil creatures and other oddities to mask her insecurities while growing up in rural Australia. So, U.S., Canada, and U.K. only. It's about Australia. Why is it not in Australia and New Zealand? That's so weird. Okay, the 14th, Hunted. We already talked about that. The 16th, a Discovery of Witches, episode 202. I guess they're kind of doing it like an episode per week for uh, Discovery of Witches season two. That's what it seems like. All right, so uh, here are the films for the Peter Cushing collection coming January 18th. And now the screaming starts. At the end of the 1700s, Catherine and Charles Honeymoon is thrown into chaos when she is raped and impregnated by a ghost. Before long, they've got, a con they've got to contend with a monstrous severed hand, a skeptical psychiatrist, and other cre creepy circumstances. One of Amicus Studios' few non-anthology films, this remains a superb slice of 70s British brutality. Cool. I'm in. Asylum. In order to secure a job at a mental institution... A young psychiatrist must interview four patients inside the asylum and hear their terrifying stories. Sounds like an anthology, so I'm down. The Beast Must Die. A group of guests at a country house learn that one of them is secretly a werewolf in the supernatural mystery, which famously included a werewolf break where audience members could guess who the guilty party is. That's interesting. Among the many suspects are an archaeologist, a piano player, and diplomat, all of whom must submit to the series of strange werewolf tests. That sounds good as well. The Flesh and the Fiends, the last of the collection. Horror audiences have long been fascinated by the tale of Robert Knox, a Scottish doctor who in 1828 became notorious for his complicity in a series of murders committed by grave robbers Burke and Hare, who received cash in exchange for fresh cadavers. John... 
Gilling's exceptionally eerie 1960 retelling, unlike John Landis's 2010 slapstick Birkin hair, is historically accurate right down to Knox's lazy left eye. That's interesting. And that one is also in Canada, so I assume all the other ones are just U.S., unfortunately. January 19th, The Wolf House. Uh, Maria, a young woman, finds refuge in a house in the south of Chile after escaping from a sect of German religious fanatics. Interesting. She is welcomed into the home by two pigs, the only inhabitants of the place. Interesting. Like in a dream, the universe of the house reacts to Maria's feelings. Hmm. The animals transform slowly into humans, and the house becomes a nightmarish world. Inspired by the actual case of Colonia Dignidad, or Dignidad, the Wolf House masquerades as an animated fairy tale produced by the leader of the sect in order to indoctrinate its followers. Huh. It's an interesting concept. That one is U.S. and Canada. The Walking Dead World Beyond on January 21st. Discovery of Witches Episode 203 on January 23rd. January 25th, Nightbreed. Um, classic Clive Barker film. Aaron is tormented by visions of monstrous graveyard-dwelling creatures, but his creepy therapist offers little solace. Um, Cronenberg, by the way. Uh, David Cronenberg. When he's framed for serial slayings in the area, he heads for Midian, a place where undead monsters known as Nightbreed live there. Barker's follow-up to Hellraiser developed a cult following on video, and its recent restoration proves its important place in horror cinema. I wonder what cut of it it's going to be, because it may be a cut I haven't seen. I know there was like a definitive cut, so I'll have to look into that. So that's U.S. and Canada only. Uh, also coming on the 25th, Rawhead Rex. I have a review for this on my channel. I recommend it. It's a so bad it's good film. Definitely watch it if you haven't seen it. He's pure evil, pure power, pure terror. <laughs> Rawhead Rex is a demon, alive for millennia, trapped in the depths of hell and waiting for release. He is held by an ancient seal, imprisoned for centuries in a barren field near the hamlet of Rathmore, Ireland. In time, this gruesome legacy has been forgotten, dismissed as an odd pre-Christian myth, until Tom Guerin decides to plow the field his ancestors knew better than to disturb. The seal is broken and an unspeakable evil is unleashed. Screenplay by Clive Barker. It's worth seeing for sure. Trust me. Also available, U.S. and Canada is where it's available. January 26th, The Untold Story. After a severed hand washes up on a Macau beach, police suspect Wong Chi Hong, the new owner of the Eight Immortals restaurant, famous for their delicious pork buns. The, heads, the hands belong to the missing mother of the restaurant's former owner, who has disappeared along with the rest of his family. Staff at the restaurant continue to go missing, but the police can't find any hard evidence. Can they make him talk? And what was in those famous pork buns? That sounds interesting. I want to check that out. U.S. and Canada. Uh, the Woman, also coming on the 26th. A man imprisons a violent feral woman and enlists his family to help civilize her. Terrified of his domineering ways, his wife and daughters reluctantly go along with his plan. But his horny son needs no encouragement to start his own abusive treatment of the woman. Lucky McKee and Jack Ketchum's shocking tale of American sadism is one of the most provocative horror films of the decade, unflinching in its depiction of extreme violence inflicted on women and the horror of unchecked male privilege. Available in the U.S., Canada, and U.K., January 28th, we already talked about The Queen of Black Magic, and then January 30th, A Discovery of Witches, episode 204. And that does it for January. Sorry about that noise. Um, so yeah, like I said, there's some things to be excited about in there. I'm excited about There are a few films I want to check out, and I probably will try and check out all those Peter Cushing films. But yeah, it's it's a little more low-key than the last like three or four months that Shudder's had. So um, I'm going to use it to catch up a little bit, but I'll watch a few new things. But like I said, don't forget the originals and exclusives other than Discovery of Witches Season 2. I will have no spoiler reviews for on the Mondays before they come out on those Thursdays. So just be aware of that. You can check that out on my channel, and I'll always have those for the originals and exclusives. So let's go ahead and talk in the comments. What are you excited about for January? Or is this one of those months where you're just going to be like, eh, I'll catch up on other stuff. I'm not that interested. Interested in hearing what you what you think. 
Do me a quick favor though, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video or any video I've ever done, that is your best way to repay me. It is quick, it is painless, and it truly means a lot to me. I'm very thankful when people do subscribe. Uh, also hit the notification bell, and that way you know when I'm putting up videos like this, any of my many movie reviews, uh, unboxings, all that type of stuff. But regardless, I appreciate you taking your time to check this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.